We heard from Louis Ruckheiser there back from March of 2000, a different time, a different place, but talking about the level on the 30 year when he was talking about six, when I was going five. That's right. What does it bring to mind? Well, uh, love Ruckheiser's clips. Uh, March of 2000, uh, two things to, to mention. First, uh, that was high long term yields, really on a strong economy, very low unemployment, very good economic growth. And, and inflation was actually really tame, given how strong economic growth was at the time. So that's what we call a cyclical climb in long-term yields, and that's usually a good thing. Um, of course, it was the eve of, of just before the popping of the, and mm -hmm. just the beginning of the popping of the tech bubble. Uh, so things did get worse, but they didn't get worse for the bond market. They actually got better from the bond market uh, at that point onward. But here's the thing. I'm surprised he wasn't commenting about the late, 1990s or, or, or sorry, late uh, 19, or 80s or yeah. early 1990s, because that was something I think is more comparable to what the bond market is fretting about right now. Is inflation and is the deficit, uh, has it climbed to a, to a secularly higher level? So, so Lizanne, we were on the, uh, the verge of a major shift there with the dot-com bubble being burst. Uh, where are we right now? I mean, is this a temporary thing that's going away or are we looking at a longer term shift? I, I think we are in some sort of transition to a secular environment that it decidedly does not look like the great moderation era, which has different start points depending on what relationship or metric you're looking at. But let's call it the 25 years heading into the pandemic, which, of course, was a period of sort of perpetually declining inflation and interest rates, a massive surge in, in globalization and uh, China, meaning the world was flooded with uh, cheap and abundant access to, to goods and labor. Profits as a share of GDP were at their all-time high. Labor as a share of GDP was at an all-time uh, low in their relative to their history. And I think all of those relationships are, are shifting. And I think we're possibly in or heading into an environment that maybe looks a little bit more like the 30 years from the mid 60s to the mid 90s. I've been calling the temperamental era where you had not high inflation in perpetuity, but more inflation, volatility, more economic volatility. Maybe the most important difference between that environment and the great moderation is almost the entire 30 year period starting in the mid 60s. You had an inverse correlation between bond yields and stock prices. Then you went for about a 20, 25 year period where for most of the time you had a positive correlation. We're back in negative correlation territory. And it doesn't mean there aren't opportunities for investors. I just think it's a secular backdrop that looks quite different for people whose you know, investing horizon only dates back to the 90s. David, do you agree with that analysis? Yeah. And if so, <laughs> what does that mean about the shift between stocks and bonds? Well, I, I do agree with the idea that declining inflation, declining real interest rates all the way up until the pandemic uh, helped uh, boost equity valuations, but also productivity and therefore earnings and margins. And it's been a great 30 years. And we just have to question, uh, will it be more challenging in, in the years ahead? And, and probably. Um, I also think to myself, it's not just uh, the global factors that led to those and policies that led to lower interest rates uh, and higher productivity. Uh, but the rules-based global order. And there's still a war raging in Europe. And I think keeping an eye on Kiev over uh, the rest of this year and next year and how that turns out is, is going to speak a lot about also the, the years to come in this decade. So stocks, bonds, um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, and when things are uncertain, if you can get a, a five, yeah. six percent return on short term bonds, it sounds yeah. like a good return to get. Lizanne, come back to you on this question about the geopolitics, but also the, the politics right down in Washington that we saw so dramatically this week. Can an investor even take that into account? What do you do to try to protect yourself against those externalities that, that you really can't control? So, I mean, ultimately, when it's a question of, of either known uncertainties or not known uncertainties, you, you have to rely back on the tried and true disciplines around diversification across and within asset classes. I agree with David. There's an opportunity, certainly for income-oriented investors that don't have to go out the risk spectrum anymore to get that uh, decent income. So some of it depends on who you are as an investor. But I think this is an environment, and this is what we've been emphasizing, where if you're factor-based, um, which we think taking a factor-based approach, meaning screen for characteristics, you want to stay up in quality. And that, that quality bias should be both on the equity side of things and the, the fixed income side of things because of all the uncertainties we've, uh, we've touched on. What does that say about spreads, David? 
If it depends on which spreads. I wouldn't be surprised if corporate spreads even tighten uh, over the coming year, as long as we don't fall into a, a bad recession. Uh, but uh, I, I think what you, you'll find is that uh, there's, it's worth it to take a little bit of risk in the corporate bond market. Just don't go too far out on duration, not yet. Uh, finally, quickly, Lizanne, does that mean that this prefers actually active investing over passive? I think the playing field is more level. Last year was the best performance for active relative to their benchmarks, I think, since 2005. In general, I think dispersion will be wider with the return of the risk-free rate and ostensibly fundamentals reconnecting to prices. So maybe not active crushes passive, but a more level playing field.